Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to explore what we call the orbital magnetic quantum number, and we're going to try to actually make sense out of what that actually is and what it represents. It's not so much what it is, but actually what it represents. So, well, how do we make sense out of the orbital magnetic quantum number? That's the question. Now, first, we're going to take a look at it from a classical perspective, classical physics. So what we're going to do here is imagine we have a current loop. And of course, we make it rectangular. It's a little bit easier to work with. So here we have a current moving around in this rectangular loop. The loop creates an area, and we have a vector pointing away from the area, which is perpendicular to the area, and we'll call that the unit normal vector. Now, the magnetic moment of that current loop is equal to the product of the current around the loop and the area in vector format, the area made by the loop, which can be written as the magnitude of the area, the size of the area, multiplied times the normal unit vector. So this is known as the magnetic moment. Hmm. So what does that mean? Well, what happens now when you have a current loop Therefore, the current loop has a magnetic moment, and we place it in a magnetic field. Now there will be an interaction between the current loop and the magnetic field. Now, in classical physics, the orientation of that moment can be in any direction. So there's no limitation. So there can be any orientation of a current loop like that, therefore, of the magnetic moment when it's placed inside a magnetic field. So when you place a loop, a current loop, inside a magnetic field in classical physics, there'll be an energy associated with that, and that energy will be equal to the dot product, essentially the product, between the magnetic moment and the magnetic field. And of course, it also depends upon the angle between the normal vector of that magnetic moment and the direction of the magnetic field. And so it'll be the magnetic moment times the magnetic field times the cosine of the angle between them. The negative is just like with Lenz's law, where, of course, the, the current will set up a magnetic field, which is in opposition to the magnetic field that causes the energy to exist in the first place. But that's not important right now. We just want to understand what that means. But again, we must say that in, in classical physics, that orientation has no limitations. However, in quantum mechanics, the direction of that magnetic moment can only have discrete values, and that's where the big difference comes in. So the number of discrete values can then be determined based upon what the environment is like, and so that's what we're after here. We want to know what are all the various discrete values that the magnetic moment can take in quantum mechanics, and the number can be calculated based upon this. The number will be an integer value between the maximum value that this can be and the maximum negative value that it can be. So any number of integers between this value and this value. Now again, what are those two values? Well, L is the orbital quantum number, which is defined as follows. L will always be one less than N which is the principal quantum number, which associates to the energy level in the hydrogen atom. So if n is equal to 1, l can be 0. If n is equal to 2, l can be 0 and 1 and so forth. And so we have a little table here that explains, depending upon the value of n, the principal quantum number, which is associated with the energy level inside a hydrogen atom, l, which is called the orbital quantum number, can have these various values. And those are associated with the subshells in the atom, the S, the SMP, the SPD, and the SPDF were the, the more common ones that we typically use for most elements on the periodic table. And you can see then that also associates to the locations where the electrons can be in a hydrogen atom that has an elevated energy level. Now, if we then take a look at the various values that this quantity can be, if L takes on the value of 0, 1, 2, or 3, you can see when L is equal to 0, this quantity is equal to zero, which only leaves you with one integer, zero, which means there's only one possible orientation. But when L is equal to one, the value of this is equal to the square root of two, which means that the possible integer values you can have is plus one, zero, and negative one, because again, the m sub L, which is called the orbital magnetic quantum number, will fall within 
these limits right here and be an integer value. So there'll be three possible orientations and that's associated with the P subshells. If L is equal to two, that's when you work this out, you get the square root of six, which is approximately equal to 2.45, which means that the integer numbers contained within the positive and negative of those two values is two, one, zero, negative one, and negative two. And in L is equal to three, that's the square root of 12. So the values that M sub L can have is three, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two, and negative three, seven possible values. And again, the number of possible values for M sub L, which is known as the orbital magnetic quantum number, is equal to the number of possible orientations the magnetic moment can have. Now the magnetic moment in this case is created by the single electron zipping around the nucleus of the hydrogen atom that is therefore called a current loop which therefore has a magnetic moment and the orientation of that loop is determined by the number of values m sub l can have, m sub l being the orbital magnetic quantum number. So if there's three possible values, that means there's three possible orientations. If there's five possible values, then there's five possible orientations. If there's seven, of course you get the picture at this point. So you see, that's what that means. So to make sense out of the, the orbital magnetic quantum number, it represents the number of possible orientations the current loop can have created by the electron inside the hydrogen atom. And that's what it is. Hmm, hopefully that helps to make sense out of it. And of course, these then are associated with the possible subshells you can have in the various energy levels. And so that's why there's three P subshells because there's three possible orientations. There's five D subshells because there's five possible orientations within for the uh, magnetic current loop or for what we call the magnetic moment. And that's what we mean by the orbital magnetic, wow. It actually makes sense. You're not taping this, are you? <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> Turn it off.